All right, guys, so this is just a short and simple video, but it's very important. In fact, this should have been one of the first videos that I made. And this is just simply about saving your work and different strategies to saving properly. So what I do is if I've got a project that I'm working on, for example, every time I make a change, as you can see here, I've got, you know, version three, four, five, six, seven. We're on this song right here. So if I make a change to this song, what I like to do is create another version. So I called this Ableton 9 demo because it's a demo song that comes with Ableton 9. And uh, then I'll just save it into the same folder. Okay. And each time that I do another tweak or whatever, I will create a new number. So that way I can always go back to the original part if I want, if, if I start taking myself in the wrong direction. Now that doesn't normally happen, but it's always good to have that backup. Another thing that I'll do oftentimes is, even if I haven't made changes, I'll make a, an A and B, like so I've got demo two, and then I'll make demo two B, which are both exactly the same, okay? And the reason I do that is just to ensure that if one of the files were to go corrupt, I'd still have the other one as a backup. Okay, so the next thing with saving is doing a collect all and save. So basically the way this will work, and what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll save this as a new song just to give you an example. So I'll do a save live set as, and let's just save something onto the desktop. And I'll just put, uh, that. So when I save onto the desktop, it will actually create a folder for me where previously you would have to create a folder. It, it never hurts to create a folder and then put it inside, but Ableton kind of does that for you. So when I hit save, if I take a look here, it creates this folder for me. All right. So basically any other versions I want to save in the same area. Okay. Now the next thing that's important is if you're using samples and things like that, for example, this has a few samples here and what the song's doing is it's finding these samples in the library. But if I were to share this or use it, or put it on another computer that didn't have the samples, these samples wouldn't show up. So what you want to do is after you save your song into a folder, then you want to do a collect all and save. And I always say yes to all of these so that it drags every file that I'm using. It doesn't assume that I've got the uh, user library. So after I say yes to all this, I'll hit OK. And it's going to save all the samples into the folder. So if I come into the folder now, as you can see, there's a sample folder imported. And then this has all the samples that were used. So no matter what happens to the samples where they originally were, I've always got the samples in the song inside my project folder. So I'll usually do this with every song that I have is save a copy of all the samples that I used. So at any time, if I back this file up and come back to it years later, I don't have to worry about whether my original library of samples has changed because all the files will be saved inside of here. So that is my little tutorial on just saving songs in Ableton. So to recap, just save different versions of the same song so that you could always go back to an older version. If you're worried about a song becoming corrupt or something like that, then uh, save, save the same song and make like an A and a B version. And third, if, you've, if you're using any kind of samples or any presets from, you know, a drum, drum samples or sampler or whatever, then do a collect all and save. And only do this after you've saved the song. That way it puts everything inside the folder that was created. And that's it.